Hi and welcome. In this short video I'll try to explain to you how this uh, grid view is working. This is an advanced grid view with some extra features um, which can be seen here if you click uh, edit. There is a number of uh, combo boxes or drop down lists and there's a check mark and some normal edit boxes and then there's a few columns here which is read only and then you have an ability to click an add button here uh, but let me first explain a little more uh, the underlying da data structure um, okay this application is for uh, for entering test data I'm an, on a number of uh, web pages so on each web page there is a table to hold the application name and the URL and for each URL there can be an infinite number of te uh, tests um, and each, for each test we want to enter you know, what browser was it running on um, and so uh, these boxes are uh, primarily just lists of, um, of values that you can enter in here in the test okay let me go back to, to the browser so these are the operating systems in that list these are the browsers web browsers and these are different versions of uh, .NET Framework and Mono. For each application there's going to be many tests, maybe 50 or several hundred tests. So we don't want to have, uh, you know, this combined hundreds of applications times hundreds of tests. It's just going to be uh, impossible to get an overview. So this, uh, this row actually accumulates all tests for this application. Uh, currently there has been free tests and we can click on the details and see uh, all the free tests uh, that have been carried out uh, some were on Windows XP, some were on Windows 7 and one was on Chrome OS so really what I want to talk about is this uh, grid view here but now I've given you an overview of, of the application um, so for this grid view uh, it always shows the latest test that was carried out on that application um, and you can delete the latest one then there are only two tests left uh, or you can edit and if you edit you can either edit the, the latest tests or you can add a new one so let me just uh, come up with a crazy one um, let's say that this one is running on Android uh, it's, uh, the browser is not here let's say it runs on Opera and the .NET framework is this one I do not have average to, to write, let me just put that like that. Quality, maybe that is 5. And message, some dummy test, alright? Um, and then I can click add. And then you see that that, that extra, uh, that new row is added to the table. So now you can see that this. Uh, new test that I, I just entered is added to the to this uh, table um, okay so let's concentrate on how this is implemented with these additional columns here and with the drop down lists um, so let's go over to uh, Visual Studio okay um, so basically oh Basically, you start out with the grid view like you would in any other um, application or web application that you're going to design. Oops. Ah, oh, there it is. Um, and then you uh, you set up the the data source. Instead of using uh, select parameters. Slow. Uh, I've used uh, um, I've used store procedures. So you click next, and here you're able to enter the store procedures. And I've just uh, used four different store procedures, um, and that's basically it. And then for the grid view. Um, I went into the column editor 
and I've set up um, I don't know why there's two here um, anyway here you can see all the columns and those are here I did read only equal to false or read only equal to true of course this one and that one and then for the um, uh, for the OS name, the browser name and the framework I click on the link that is usually here that generates a, a template for those and then the last ones here uh, this is a checkbox but that's generated automatically um, up here uh, I don't know why there are two but anyways um, so I just uh, again click uh, generate template let's go into the template editor and then you can see my templates okay uh, can I move this over? no I can't okay so for the first um, for the column zero oh yeah I have a hidden column that's why uh, okay um, okay for column zero in a uh, in item mode I show the edit the delete and the details uh, and I simply just added another one here the details button and if you double click on that one you can see that the only thing I do is uh, redirect uh, uh, respond redirect to another page where I have this this other uh, data grid showing but then I need to add um, the the app ID which I find from this I'll come back to this later um, so I find the lead uh, the value from basically from this row that I've clicked in uh, but let me go back so I just added that extra one there and then the same in the in the edit mode I also added the add button uh, simply just a, a link button that I added to text uh, let's go into a source mode you can see here um, how it looks so uh, here's a standard button that you have the the update button um, and then there's the add button that I created and then there's a standard cancel button here which is created by the Visual Studio um, I've added some extra little detail here that the update button or the yeah the update button should only be um, enabled if uh, if there are rows beneath show here that there here there are no rows um, there is no test for this application yet so delete and update button are disabled okay so that's how I add the buttons um, and let me show you how I add the um, Let me show you how I add the combo boxes. Basically, for the combo box, the when it's just uh, showing the output here, it just uses a label, and that's the basic thing that is generated by Visual Studio. Uh, but when you're in edit mode uh, here, edit mode, I've uh, removed the text box that is usually here and then I've added a combo box and for that combo box I go in and I create a data source so and this is just a simple select I select all from that table with the operating system types both the, the ID column and the, and the name um, and then oh. Oh, oops there it is and then here I configure that it should uh, display the this name and it should use this ID for uh, for uh, binding to the uh, to the table of the main uh, data grid okay and so of course I do the same for the next ones for the browser and for the framework uh, it's the same thing I do so let's look at how it looks in code